This is Tim, and this is Deconstructing Comics. Welcome to Deconstructing Comics. This is Tim in Tokyo. This week we conclude our coverage of the 2016 Kaigai Manga Festa, or International Comics Festival, held here in Tokyo on October 23rd. You'll hear talks with Graham McNee, Mulele, and other tablers at the show, and a couple of special talks at the end of this episode. First, Matthew Forsyth, who appeared in Deconstructing Comics episode 316, and since then has spent three seasons as lead designer on the TV cartoon Adventure Time. Then I catch up with Carl Kerschel, artist on DC's Gotham Academy, who will fill us in on his upcoming image series with Gotham Academy writer Brendan Fletcher. But first, remember that you can help this podcast by making your Amazon purchases via deconstructingcomics.com slash Amazon and make that your bookmark for future purchases. We'll then get a percentage of what you spend. It costs you nothing extra and helps us cover web hosting and the other costs of presenting this show every week. And now Kaigang Manga Festa 2016, Part 2. Be sure to follow along with all the photos and links in the show notes at deconstructingcomics.com. Okay, so I'm at the Samagumo table. Yes. Yeah, I remember you guys from last year. So Finnish and Japanese kind of cooperative project here. Yes. So, so what do you have here this year? Well, this year we have the yokai project. Right, the kind of mythical creatures from Japan and Finland. Yes, so yokai is a Japanese term, but uh, we're using it to also describe Finnish, Finnish mythological creatures, because they kind of have many similarities. So uh, we have the collection where we try to bring together the two cultures and kind of like show that um, there are similar stories in both countries. Uh, then we have our new collection, which is... Um, wartime stories from Finland's winter war and continuation war and uh, we have um, so this is non-fiction? yes non-fiction okay. we had several experts who were helping out so that we get all the facts right is this like World War II? Or? yeah this this happened around World War II it was when uh, Russia tried to invade Finland oh I see and Finland just like pushed back and we were majorly outnumbered but we managed to keep them at bay until uh, the peace treaty was signed okay so uh, there are articles along with the comics in this publication and tons of information mm, about okay. the war so uh, in japanese and is there english in here uh, no japanese? we don't have english it's a little bit of finnish <laughs> yes. we basically have our publications in japanese and finnish mm. uh, we are thinking about having them in english as well but uh, since we mostly sell them in finland and in japan then we don't really have an english audience yet but we're looking into it because a lot of people have been interested in our projects. Mm. Yeah, there are I mean, all kinds of different shows going on in the States like this. I'm sure some of them would be interested, like Mocha, for example. I went to yeah. Mocha last spring. Okay. Um, and it was, you know, it's a really indie vibe there. A lot of people yeah. just kind of doing whatever. So really eclectic. So something like this would fit in, I think. Yeah, I'm sure. And like... I, we'd really love to sell in the States as well. Uh, I think currently we have the situation that um, half of our group is from Japan, mm -hmm. so it's easier to come here and sell because we already have people here. Yeah. And the same thing with Finland. But we've got no one in the States, so it's a bit tricky. But we'll definitely look into it, mm, okay. especially as we get more collections. As I recall from last year, your website is just in Japanese and Finnish too, right? Uh, yeah, I actually, well, I'm actually uh, in charge of the website, and I op I did new websites for this year. Okay. So uh, right before this event, uh, we had our new website up, and it has English content as well. Hmm. So a short introduction, and I'm looking to put more um, scans of our stuff in there, so if English speakers can have a look and maybe decide if they would like us to make an English version of it. Okay, and so this is it here, sanmagumo.info. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Twitter, sanmagumo1. Yes. They're still under 
construction, but there is a lot of information in English already. That's what we had as our priority for this event. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll still add information in Japanese and Finnish as well. Okay, great. All right, your name is? My name's Daisy. I also go by six hours online. Six hours? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now, you said most of your stuff is gone here. You just got some free postcards left. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but tell us about your webcomic. Um, so it's it's kind of complicated story. It's about an apothecary and his assistant. Um, it They go through a bunch of stuff. Magic stuff happens in the forest. Mm. Just a bunch of stuff I really like from childhood. I put them all in one story. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and what's it called? It's called For It To Grow. For It To Grow. Yeah. Okay. So, six-hours.tumblr.com slash for it to grow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tumblr is still kind of a mystery to me. I haven't figured out how, how to customize it. Yo. Well, it depends on what you're using it for, right? Sometimes I'm lazy. I just use, like, the default layout. <laughs> But I just post stuff on there. Usually people don't look at your main page, they look at like on their dashboard, so it doesn't really matter what how you customize your main blog anyway. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Alright. So and now you're here with a TCAF. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're from Canada. I'm from Toronto, yeah. Toronto. Yeah. yeah. Everybody from Toronto or other parts of Canada? Uh, well, my friend here, she's actually living in Tokyo full time now. She moved here in the fall. Okay, so your friend who is not here right now, but is, has been sitting here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a break or something. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so she's li living here. All right. Yeah. Uh, Ak Akimiya Jun. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Japanese name. Yeah. Uh, well, that's like her pen name. Pen name, okay. Yeah, and she does um, very manga influence work. Ah, uh, yes. She does. She likes a bunch of books, like strange stuff as well. <laughs> so it can vary from like shonen to jose to shoujo. Hmm. So she's very varied in that sense. And she's entered a bunch of um, like contests that's held in Japan mm -hmm. for like um, international manga. Um, she likes to enter the one where you don't use words and you write a comic. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's interesting. My name is Joseph Hewitt. Okay, and uh, what do you what do you have here today? Uh, I have all of the books that I've been doing through Polar Bear Comics and the California College of the Arts MFA Comics Anthology for 2016. Okay, or so are you involved in this? Oh yeah, I, I just uh, I just graduated from the uh, the program this year. Okay, I've got my MFA now. Uh, I'm visiting from Korea. Oh, okay. So, uh, so you don't live in California or Japan? I don't live Korea. in California or Japan. I live in Korea. Uh, uh, about five, five years ago I was there and uh, I was looking for a new job. And my wife suggested I apply to the university. They were looking for somebody. And I looked at the, the want ad and I was like, well, they want somebody with their master's or a PhD and they want somebody with five years university experience. I don't have that. But she said, yeah, but it's a good job, so apply anyway. So I applied. I went there. I gave the speech. I gave the sample class about uh, writing. I thought I did pretty well. I said, what do you think? And at the end of it, they said, well, that was very nice. But what we'd actually like to talk to you about is your comics work. Mm. And uh, so I, I got hired there to teach creativity to engineers. Okay. <laughs> Which was a pretty sweet deal. Uh, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a fantastic job, honestly. Uh, but now that I've graduated from the MFA program, and it's five years later, I'm finally qualified for the job I've been holding this entire time. So I'm quite happy about that. Okay, are you teaching online then from Korea? Uh, or? Oh, no, I, I teach in a classroom in oh, Korea. Okay. In Korea. In okay. Korea, you're yes. So you're teaching face-to-face? Face-to-face, yeah. Korea yeah, the uh, California. Yeah, the, well, the California... College of the Arts. Yeah. I, I don't work at this university. This okay. is the university I graduated from. All right, okay. Uh, but, uh, so yeah. So you're teaching through some other program. Oh, yeah, Korea. I teach uh, at uh, Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. I see, okay, yeah, I got a little confused there. Okay, okay yeah, <laughs> uh, that's okay. I, I'm very confused today. <laughs> that's fine. Have you been so, in Japan before? This is my first time in Tokyo. I've, I've visited Fukuoka a number of times because it's much easier to get to from where I live. Oh, sure, okay. Uh, this is the first time in Tokyo. I am in a constant state of wonderment and confusion, to be honest. Last night I got lost, but I got lost in Akihabara 
which is the good kind of lost. That was like two hours of wandering around, starry-eyed, and, and like, oh man, I want all of this stuff. So that was great. Um, I, I have a, uh, in Korea, I do a comics imprint called Polar Bear Comics, and we have all of the books here. Uh, we have Snow Cone City, which is my, uh, this is the most popular one in Korea. It's superhero penguins. Uh, it's been pretty popular here in Japan, too, so good for it. Uh, we have my most recent book, The Last Human Alive, which is a post-apocalyptic funny animals book. You've got uh, the human race has gone extinct and the world is now ruled by rodents, but they, they receive word that there is one human left alive, so they round up the zoo village army to go take care of the problem. <laughs> And uh, things don't go as they would have wanted and uh, go downhill pretty fast. But that's good. It's funny. Okay. And we have Alien Lives. This is an anthology of weird fiction stories, science fiction, fantasy. And uh, the stories are presented, half of them are in Korean, half of them are in English. So the language alternates with each passing story. Uh, because when I, when I was younger, I read a lot of uh, comics in foreign languages. Like, I, I, I saw some Mobius comics in the original French and some uh, manga in Japanese. And I didn't know what any of it was, but I was fascinated by it. So I tried to replicate that, that sensation here. <laughs> the book works best if you speak neither English nor <laughs> Korean and are just looking at the pictures going, What the hell is going on? Uh, okay, so you're here in a third-party country, people, people uh, yeah, speak just I, Japanese. Japan so. is the market for this book. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you don't speak either of those languages, this is for you. And, um, oh, and I have my, the one I'm working on now, which is called How to Be Human. It's a Canadian conspiracy thriller about, um, oh my goodness, mind-controlling computer games and... A, uh, a film strip that they used to watch in middle school that would teach the students how to be human and a group of people who missed school that day. Mm. So, so that's a weird book, but again, it's funny. So you can get a, you can get away with a lot of nonsense as long as you keep it entertaining. So are you from Canada originally? I am from Canada originally. I'm from Newfoundland. Uh, so. Uh, my, my home now is exactly 12 time zones away from back home, so the exact opposite side of the planet. Uh, it's all right. Yeah, okay, uh, cool. Uh, and wh where are you on the web? Uh, I'm at polarbearcomics.com. Comics with an X. C-O-M-I-X. Yeah, just noticing the business card over yeah. here. Polarbearcomics.com. One of your rodents. Yes. No polar bears. No polar bears, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 name, uh, the name did actually cause a little bit of confusion when I was in San Francisco, but, uh, but that's okay. okay. We dealt with it. Okay. Uh, that was okay. So, Graham McNee, how are you doing? Uh, pretty good. Pretty hot again. Yes. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. good. <laughs> But already we're down to just like an hour left here. Yeah, it's gone really quickly this time actually. It's good. Um, so you have anything new this time? Um, yeah, I've got three new books okay. this time. Um, I've got the second volume is the Scotland No Euro Euro series, which is just short essay mangas kind of introducing Scottish culture to Japanese people. Like they're all in Japanese and this issue covers things like golf and haggis and highland cows. <laughs> it's pretty fun. And then I have a zine which is a compilation of the review comics I drew for the Edinburgh International Festival this year. Review comics? Yeah, so I was working with them and I went to watch a lot of the shows that were on in the festival. And then after each one I drew a comic and they shared it on their website. And then I've collected them into a zine. Ah, interesting. Okay. And then the other one that I made is was kind of my first ash can, which is basically because I couldn't quite finish in time. <laughs> so like I did a traditional ash can where they you know they just print out like a short preview. Um, it's called Bench, and it's just about 
what happens on a park bench, just okay. the different people that come and sit by on it. And people coming and going and doing different things there. Yeah, and it, I mean, it could be quite an endless book, it's like as many ideas as you can think of, is, like you can keep making more pages and more pages. Sure. So maybe uh-huh. I'll even make a, like, I was thinking maybe I should make a binder, and people can just click <laughs> in new episodes as they come out. Yeah. Um, bench chapter 47. Yeah, yeah, and just keep going, that might be quite fun. But in the meantime, this is just like... Like an ash can, just a simple black and white mm. print. But it came out quite nice. It hadn't do- dawned on me before. Did you draw the, the logo for the cat event? Yeah, that's July? right. I did. Okay, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I see your black cat there on the bench in the last page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, looks right. like the same cat. Yeah, he turns up in pretty much every story. Oh, right. First and last. Yeah, yeah, and I was starting to think, yeah, I'd seen him in some of your other work also. Yeah, and then actually the cat logo was kind of his like bad cousin. Um, with a little bit of a bad attitude. Like that was the request that I got to I draw. See. <laughs> the same cat, but kind of the bad sheep in the family or the bad cat in the family e- evil twin yeah 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 <laughs> you can see him he's got claws which this, the regular one doesn't and I see. he's scratching and stuff like that mm, okay so mm, that's cool. it yeah, it's been good so still hanging out in Kobe yeah I am yeah I am um, that's really good and still doing the Kobe diary online and, yeah just helping people find out more about the city okay that's good My name is Justin M. Nipper. Okay. Now you were telling me you, you live in New York. I'm originally from New York, but now I'm based in Tokyo. Okay, so you live here now. All right. Um, Panoptic Press. The Panoptic your... Press, yeah. Okay. So the Panoptic Press is an imprint where we print mainly comics, but we also make toys like this one right here, and a lot of it's hand printing, but a lot of it's big prints too. What is this toy? I'm this is a bog man. Bog this is, man. This is made by the artist named Bile. Uh, from Rochester, New York, and okay. this is a handmade resin uh, statue. Uh, to describe, it's hard to describe. Yes, it is hard to describe. Uh, it, it, it's sort of like a pink swamp thing. Yeah, uh, the influence <laughs> was if you're familiar with the old Universal Monsters uh, dolls from the 70s, uh, they had this plastic pink feel to them, so it was influenced by that. Uh, the sculpture was again, yeah, done by Bile, and yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, uh, we also have a lot of um, these are handmade comics. This is a latest issue. This is called Failed State. This is by both uh, myself. I wrote this with artist Steve Arenas. Uh, hard to describe. Maybe a social crime anthology comic. Mm, okay. Yeah. If you'd like to take a look, uh, a lot of uh, different stories taking place in the same world. Uh, okay. interspersed with some prose and some um, what else do we have here articles on crime in Japan articles on crime in New York there's a little two page on the ABC killer from Rochester, New York to, mm, to okay. mix it up yeah uh, yeah that's right Yeah. so yeah and that's our latest okay. edition <laughs> alright this is this is actually Makiko Suda. Oh, hello. <laughs> I just came back. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what work did you do here? I just did the artwork for the... I think he has already mentioned about the comic I did the artwork for. Okay. And yes, and I did some artwork for the my burns and... So I'm doing the doodling such as this one. And this is a, a work for the... So these, these comics are called Sun Home City, and this one right here was featured in the last Panoptic Presents anthology, which just sold out. Okay. I'd love to show you, but, but this is the original art. I see. Yeah. So it's kind of horror? Horror fantasy comedy. With, with moles. With two moles. <laughs> two moles and the one-eyed man. Okay. Who, uh, he's drinking a strawberry milkshake with his eye. Mm, okay. Three of them. Mm. All right, interesting. Thank so you. this was drawn by you. Yes. And, you, and you're the writer. That's right. Mm, okay. Uh, well, how, can people like order it online or something? Yeah, how definitely. Can they get it. They can go to thepanopticpress.com, and we have a shop there, and you can buy everything directly through our site. Okay, uh, yeah. URL includes the 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 panopticpress.com. The panoptic press. The panoptic press. Yeah. Um, 
I just wanted to let you know that it's shipping from the U.S., not Tokyo. So if you're listening in the States, cheaper shipping. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. So are you doing like through a print-on-demand thing or uh, for which for for the stuff that's being printed in the states? Uh, so this is kind of print-on-demand. The other things that the the it's sold out. I wanted to show you, but that that are we're usually pressing things that are hundred copies from the press, hundred copies per release. So we're trying to do. Um, Two anthologies per year, two anthologies per year, and those are big press. So we have a press out in New York, and we press about a hundred per issue. And for example, this one is hand pressed, so these are on demand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I've just been surprised I haven't been able to find any print on demand in Japan. Like I, I still publish something too, but I had to do it through the states to do print on demand and mm. plugged it into Amazon and whatever. I, I'm not sure how. Any time that I've tried to look into that mm, in Japan, it's very expensive, mm. or there are certain uh, you have to order a certain amount. You can't. It, it depends, but I'm not an expert on that, so. Uh, my name is. Can I say my nickname is okay? okay. Misurino, yes, Misurino. Uh, Misurino. Yes. Okay. Now, where are you from originally? I'm from Italy. Italy. Okay. Yeah. You live in Japan. I live in Japan and I work in an anime company. Mm, okay. Animation great. company. Yeah. Okay. And then you're you're doing some your own stuff on the side. Yeah. Or? Actually, I create a, a group of artists uh, during my during university okay. with my friends and yeah. it's actually an international group so we have people from Japan, Malaysia, Italy, mm -hmm. Vietnam, China and uh, I mean yeah we okay. were exchange students in the same university so this, we decided to make a club and to draw comic mm -hmm. and and to print our own comic and to sell our own works. I yeah. see. So they're members of your group? Yeah. Yeah. She, okay. Yeah, she's <laughs> John. Johnisa. 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 Yes, Johnisa. Yeah, and he's Gonkitsune. 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 Yeah. Okay, is that Kitsune, the fox on your. Uh, this is a ferret. Ferret. And he draw, he draw him. Okay. And his, his friend draw the, the wolf. Wolf. Yes. Okay, it's a wolf. I draw the cat and the tiger. Mm. Yes. I see. Yes. So, do you all draw your shirts? Yes. Yes. My comic okay. from my comic. From, yeah, okay, yeah, seen from your okay. comic on your on your T-shirt. Okay. Yeah, here. Yeah, you got the preview here. Is she she studied filmmaking and she really like a B B movie, a horror yeah, B like movie. Horror so she okay. decide and she like cat as well. So she decided to make a comic with cats and B movie, B okay. horror B movie. Crazy yeah. prison. Crazy yeah. prisons. Yes, a lot of cats in a prison with mm. psycho doctor and crazy cats inside. Yes, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That's how to describe. Crazy. Yeah. It's very difficult. It's it's just crazy, as the title said. Crazy cats. <laughs> Yeah, I see, and that's all in Japanese, I see. Uh, this is in Japanese, but we are planning to translate in English mm -hmm. and to put online as well, because mm -hmm. it's difficult to sell print copy. It's very expensive to print, yeah, so yeah. we want to make online release. Uh -huh. And this one we actually draw together is it's called the Super Misurino. It's, it's like a concept I made when I was six years old. <laughs> and, yes, that's so cute. because I like superhero and I like uh -huh. cats, so I wanted to make a comic okay, with superhero so and cat cats. Superheroes. Yeah, so so at first it, it it was supposed to be a parody, really funny and and very cute. But when we changed and we made like very deep message, like <laughs> like the company, the main character is working is corrupt, so you cannot make your own art. Mm. So you have to work by yourself and make your own art. That that was the message of the comic, yes. actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks for it looks like for kids, but uh -huh. it has actually a deep message inside. Mm, yeah. And then this was made by uh, it's called Journey to Tule. is made f by five international artists, uh, two fr three from Italy and one from Malaysia and one from Japan. It's it's about a traveler who discover 
uh, we discover a place called Tule, which is a legendary place. T H U L E. Yes, Tule. <laughs> Actually, if if you if you have studied uh, Greek mythology, you can find the island of Tule. Mm. So we use this as a concept, and we we draw we draw this sketchbook, which which looks like a travel book. Mm -hmm. So there is you know the date like we're uh, October. And there is the each memo of, of a traveler. Okay, like a yeah. traveler's diary. A traveler's diary, exactly. With so, a lot of illustrations. Yeah, well, like he found this strange creature that looked like a cat but is like humanoid. Mm. Yes. Then on the next so you can see his behavior like and then in the next page she find a, a tribe tribe culture. People living there and describe like the dress, dressing and everything. Yeah. Okay. It was difficult because we have different artists, but everyone had to like follow, Try you know, the it, same. So it looked like the same person. Looks like the same person, exactly. That okay. was the most difficult part. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Having kind of a house style. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then finally, uh, we have over two comics. One is drawn by my Malaysian, our Malaysian member. Oh. Um, is a is it's called in Japanese it's called a one is like an is an illustration book for children, mm -hmm. so it's about a, a pet, mm -hmm. which in this case is a dragon, is a dragon pet who get lost into the into the forest and try to go back to his uh, to his friends to his human friends. So he meet he meet a teddy bear inside. He meet a bear in the forest and then he meet a wolf and he try to escape and to, to go back. To his own, you know, owner. At the end, he yeah. finally meets her. Yeah, it's a very short. I mean, for children, it's a children yeah. book. And then the last one in is Japanese. In Japanese, but he made an English version as well. Okay. And the last one, thank you. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Selling here, Japanese is going to sell better than English, probably. Uh, it's very difficult to to sell English in 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 Japan because mm. no one understands English. So, <laughs> but we want really to join convention outside Japan as well. So, I'm from Italy, for example. I really want to join Italian convention. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so we want to translate in other languages. And the last yeah, one, the Italian versions of everything. That's yeah, yeah. Like this one, for example, is a comic about kitsune, which means foxes in Japanese. It's mm -hmm. about Japanese foxes and and uh, Japanese culture, so Japanese shrine. So it's about a traveler who get into into this temple and got lost inside because of of a spell of of a fox. Yeah, this was drawn all by by pencil. Mm -hmm. And then I scan everything and then print it. Yeah, you can see that the lines are totally different from, you know, from the original page. And when you print it, it's totally different. So yeah. Mm, and then finally okay. we have stickers and stickers. yeah, and other goods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. Cool. So if, now I was going to ask if if you if you were doing this in Italy, if you had English books, would they sell, or would people want them in Italian? I, I suppose Italian wants want want Italian, yeah, uh, because there are there aren't really a lot of people who know English very well in Italy, so they prefer they prefer to read in Italian. It's more simple, you know. Yeah. But I think if if the author author is famous, probably he can sell even in English. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, just if he's famous, that's the only problem. I mean, yeah, you have to be well known in the industry, you know, and you have a, a lot of contact with other artists. I never, I never did this kind of, you know, exposition in Italy because I never got an opportunity. But in Japan, it's very easy to get inside the convention and take mm -hmm. a booth. Ah, a booth. Yes. It's it's not very expensive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I want I want Italy to make more original originally. Ah, original convention, if possible. I, I totally like to, I yeah, to join. Yes. Mm, okay. Do you have a website for your group? Yeah, we have a website. Uh, we have actually we have a Neko Studio. It's called okay. Neko Studio, Neko Stadio, and you can find on Facebook. There is a Facebook page, and then there is the website over here. Yeah. This one is a blog, and this one is the Neko store. Neko Studio. Neko Studio blog. Uh, B L O G. Okay. Yes. Tumblr. Dot the com. Mm, okay. And then, if you look, if you, if you like, 
search for Neko Studio on Facebook. Mm. We have an official page, so we usually write everything there, like uh, when we are going to sell, when okay. we are going to translate in English. and everything. The page is in the English, Japanese, and Italian, so you can choose. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you can choose the language. Hmm. Okay. I just opened it one, one week ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, show's almost over. It's three thirty, and uh, Malele's here. Malele's been tabling all day. How's it going? I'm exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, but also my Kickstarter starts tonight, so yeah. I've been up all night <laughs> working on that. It's not finished, so after this, I got to run home and continue that. So yeah, no sleep for Malele. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so when was the last time you actually slept? Did you uh, sleep at all last night? I slept about three hours last night, okay. and um, I uh, before that. I think maybe about five hours. Yeah. So maybe three days ago I had a, a, night, a good night's sleep. Yeah. yeah. I see. Okay. Um, how are sales today? Not bad, actually. I was surprised. I, I didn't have anything new today, but um, still a lot of people came and bought. Mm. Um, a couple of people came to my table and said, yeah, I've got all your stuff. See you next time. And it, that, that can't be helped. But um, I, I, I felt a pretty good response compared to uh, Comic Head during the summer, which that was kind of a low, a low mm. point. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't feeling too optimistic about today, but actually it turned out okay. And I, I met a lot of people that I haven't seen in, in well, a year, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really, really good. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. So did you get a chance to walk around and look at others? Other people's tables? Barely, huh. barely. Um, I, I checked out um, uh, Big Ugly Robot and uh, checked out uh, Mask Neko and a couple of others. Um, but that's that's kind of all I could do, really. Mm. Yeah. Um, my assistant is is handling the table for me now but she says like when I'm when I'm away no one walks up to the table <laughs> probably because she's Japanese and they expect a, a, a foreign person uh, but um, yeah I see uh, did you notice anything different about the show this year how does it feel in comparison to other times well I I, I noticed a couple of years ago when I first started this there were a lot of people kind of coming around uh, saying hey I've got this translation service or I've got this I even got a free uh, copy of some sort of manga drawing software because they're just trying to push it on, on on artists. And that seems to have faded a little bit in the past year or two. Mm. But there's still, you know, the occasional person. Um, lots of market research people as well. Yeah. And sometimes just people walk in and say, hey, can I take a picture of your book? It's like, no, you can buy my book. <laughs> but kind of don't want to say that. It's like, oh, yes, take a picture of the cover, just not the inside, please. And um, then they say, thank you very much, and they walk away. And it's like, what? where are they going to use that? Maybe they gonna... they're, gonna, they're just taking notes of what to buy online later? Or... Uh, I, I, I would hope so, but I, I, I kind of doubt it. They're just kind of like, you know... Collecting it's... photos of books that they didn't read. Yeah, yeah. Buy. Well, it, it's, it's like tourism, I guess. <laughs> just take a photo and walk away. Or no, I, was, I wanted to say, I was... I felt like this year they didn't let the you know they've got the speaker going all the time with yeah. you know, different uh, panel discussions and last year I remember the volume was just so high mm. that I, I could hardly do interviews while they were going over there but they had the volume under control this year so I was really happy about that yeah, actually it's, it seems to be kind of a, a mellow calm I mean if whatever's going on at your table is a different story but just the atmosphere is a lot more relaxed, a lot more calm. It's not as um, frenetic. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually kind of kind of easygoing this year. Yeah, and like every, you know, this is the fourth. This is the fourth year I've done this, and plus I went to Cat last summer, and you know, it's getting every time I do this, I see more and more familiar faces. I'm talking to a lot of the same people tabling. Always some new ones too. Yeah, but um, and some people who I've talked to before who were living outside of Japan last time, but now they're in Japan full-time. Yeah, actually, that is one one of the things I, I really notice. When I go to just regular Japanese con, I'm always tabled next to someone who's like, hey, why is this foreigner sitting next to me? He does comics too? 
yeah, but this is Japan. <laughs> Get out. And I, they never actually say that stuff. They always got this like weird, twisted look on their face, like you know, I did something wrong. Um, and and I never see them again. I see them once, and that's it. Because you know the cons here are kind of big. Even the small, small yeah, ones are big. Yeah, they're so so huge that you'd be lucky to run into the same person twice ever. Yeah, but um, with the Kaigai Manga Fest, I noticed that uh, a lot of the same faces. I mean, I I don't know more than maybe. 20% of the people who, who come to it, but the fact that I know 20%, it's quite a, quite a, quite a crowd, so mm-hmm. constantly networking between tables and kind of saying hello to people, it's really, really nice, and I kind of get a sense of community here, which I really, really like, and mm-hmm. it's the thing, when I first came here to Japan, I really felt a, a, a loss of artistic community. Mm, isolated. Yeah, very isolated, yeah, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a guy on an island drawn comics that no one buys. I, I have no idea what's going on. But then recently, all of that has changed, and I, I kind of mm-hmm. feel that um, I've, I've found a good group of people. Who I really enjoy this con in particular more than the others. Yeah, I was just thinking, that this is now the third time you've tabled at this Yeah, event. yeah, and, and I was kind of thinking, you know, it's a little bit steeper than, than the rest of the con, con area because Kai Guy is uh, one cordoned off section for yeah, foreign from, artists yeah. compared the to the rest. larger comitia event, yeah. Yeah, the tables are twice as big, but they're also twice as much. But with the other side, the Japanese side, you have a choice of one or two tables. But mm-hmm. here, you have one table, which is really big. Yeah. So the investment is a little bit more, but um, I'm finding that I really enjoy it much more. And um, I have a more of a an audience because they're kind of looking for that foreign comic artist mm-hmm. yeah so I, I have to say this year this is my favorite con mm. yeah cool. coming up Matthew Forsyth Carl Kershaw and more but first if you value the content on deconstructing comics critiquing comics and to the bat poles and want to help us move up to bigger and better things how about donating a few bucks a month via patreon at patreon.com slash decon comics If everyone listening gave just $3 a month, it would make a big difference. We'd be able to reach several of our Patreon goals and bring you more content. There are over 120 episodes that are currently missing from our website, which we'll gradually make available again as we reach our upcoming goals. The first goal is just $9 away, so how about helping us out? We'd really appreciate it if everyone pitched in a few bucks a month to get us to those goals so we can re-release those early episodes. Hi, my name is Billy Hogan, host of the Superman Fan Podcast, which explores the world of Superman and the many creators who have added to his legacy over the decades. Episodes will feature creator biographies or highlight some of their top stories they have created as well as their top characters. Other episodes will feature topics appropriate to the holiday or the time of the year. For instance, Valentine's Day will feature stories about the women in Superman's life, April Fool's Day will feature some of the bizarre Superman Silver Age stories or some of the imaginary stories that have been published. Halloween will feature some of the scary Superman stories or some of his strange transformations and, of course, some of the Christmas Superman stories. The website can be found at supermanfanpodcast.mypodcast.com The blog is supermanfanpodcast.blogspot.com and you can send email to supermanfanpodcast at gmail.com. I also have a spoiler-free comic book review blog of the titles I read every week, which can be found at mypolllist.blogspot.com and you can send email about this blog to mypolllist at gmail.com. All right, so Akiyama Jun is back at her table. So how are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. Now you live in Canada, Toronto. Oh, uh, I did. Now oh, I that's right. She said you you've moved yes. to Tokyo now. Uh huh. Okay. What are you doing in Tokyo? 
Um, well, I just work here, so yeah, I'm also here to you know attend comic events and such. Okay. Um, so she said this was your pen name. Oh yeah. But um, I mean, do you have Japanese background or? Um, well, sort of. It's kind of like a secret, but uh, I see. yeah. Did you take one yet? Um, yeah, I think I got one of these actually. Uh, I'm sure I did. She she handed me one. So. <laughs> Um, so what kind of comics do you do? Uh, illustration just, or what do you what is it exactly? General web comics, uh, you know, a little bit of like manga style or that just the you know the general. I'm still like starting out. Okay. So, yeah. oh, so what, when, how long ago did you start? Uh, five years or so ago, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So quite quite recent for like an artist. Yes. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. um, so now. This is a story up until now? Uh, it's actually a collection of my short webcomics. Collection comics. of webcomics. Okay, so what, what are the stories about? The stories are generally anything that inspired me. So, for example, um, one of my most popular stories online is called Nine Lives, and it's about a cat who gets reincarnated every single time he dies into a different type of cat. So it's about how he spends his nine lives, and in the end, well, you know, well, if you read it, you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. And so it's Akiyama Jun. Akimiya Jun. Aki, Aki Miya, okay, sorry. No, Aki Jun. Okay, sorry. Jun.net. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Okay. What's your name? Uh, Barnaby Baginda. Uh, yeah. Barnaby Baginda. Okay. Where, where are you from? Indonesia. Indonesia. Yes. All right. Um, and uh, now you're doing what's like Transformers or something? No, what, what is this? Uh, Omega Man. Omega, Omega Man. Man. Yeah. All right. Music comment. Um, and who's who is this published by? DC Comics. DC Comics. DC. Comic. DC. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, so you, you live you live in Indonesia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is this your first time in Japan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what, what's. I don't know this comic very well. What's what is the story about? It's uh, about a group of rebels, you know, uh, fighting the uh, empire, like the empire, sort of like Star Wars, you know. Star Wars. Yeah, sort of, sort of like that. Yeah. Mm, I <laughs> so see. This is the Omega. Omega Man is the rebel group. Rebel group, like a rebel group. Yeah. Mm, okay. All right. And do you have a website? Um, yes. Uh, what, what's the website? Uh, uh, do you have an address of it someplace? Write it or something? No. Can you uh, say it? Barnaby Bagenda, uh, daportfolio.com. Barnaby Bagenda, daportfolio.com. Mm, okay. Uh, now, I know you, we've talked before. Now I'm trying to re read your name here in Katakana. How do you pr usually pronounce your name? Le François Vincent. Okay. Uh, in French, it's Vincent Le François. Okay. And, and you lived in Tokyo for a while now? No, never, never. never. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm living in Fukuoka, in, in Fukuoka. Kyushu, okay. for 25 years. I see, okay. I never lived in Tokyo, actually. Never, never in Tokyo, but no. in Japan for 25 years. For a long in, time, in Fukuoka. that's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and it looks like your comic here is about living in Japan. Yes, it's, uh, it's so... Mm, can I say that? I like to to use the, the place where, where I like to be and use these places in some stories. I mean, create stories in these places, actually. So all my stories are talking about one place I like or one place uh, quite uh, uh, important for what is uh, Fukuoka City for me. Mm -hmm. And I okay. create some fiction, of course, okay. in these places. I assume this is you because of the distinctive sideburns. Exactly, that's yes. why That's why I, I, I do that. I and see. So people recognize you. <laughs> okay, now yes. is there an English edition of this? No, 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 only, only Japanese and some some French pages on my homepage. I see, okay. But only Japanese version. All right, so actually. no English at the moment. No English, not yet, no. Mm, I see. Uh, so, Nihon ni aru machi, so a street in Japan? No, the street. Or, or a town. A town. A city in Japan. A town in Japan. Yeah. So my okay. purpose is to to do some pages about some places all, all over Japan. Tokyo, Kyoto, or, mm. or other places. And in the end, to have kind of portraits of what is a Japan, Japanese city, mm. in my opinion. 
So now, I of course, it's Fukuoka because I'm living there. But I, I, I'm ready to go to go to not to to travel around mm, Japan and, and do some pages about places I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Interesting. It's, it's a purpose for me. Okay. Um, and what's your website? Ateliersdecalé.net. Mm, okay, I'm not sure how to spell that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Actually, it's written here, but yeah, Atelier okay. A T E L I E R D E C A L E dot net. Okay, great. Okay, I'm talking with Matt Forsyth, who was on our show it was over four years ago now. Um, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great. It's really great to be in Tokyo. This is your first time here? No, I was here like 10 years ago. I used to live in Korea. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. So I came over a couple of times then, but uh, yeah, it's been so long that uh, everything is new again. Now, I don't, I don't remember. So when we talked, it was like spring of 2012, and I don't know that you were involved in Adventure Time yet. Then, no, I think you? that's probably exactly when I, like shortly after then, I probably moved down to L.A. for a couple of years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did that happen? How did you get involved in... in they just emailed time? me, and they were like, hey, do you want to try out for the show? And I knew they were casting a wide net, so I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, thanks. You know, I'm flattered and honored that you're asking me, but there's no way you're going to hire me. <laughs> and then, like, two weeks later, they were like, you want to move down to L.A.? <laughs> and at wow. first, I was kind of like, oh, I, don't, I don't really want to move to L.A. because it's, you know, it's, it's a different city, and mm. I'm, I'm a little over the hill in terms of moving to a new city and starting a new industry. But, uh... Uh, but then I thought about it for like an hour, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll do it." So I went. Sure. Yeah, it's a nice career move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was really. Uh, it was really great. You know, I didn't go to art school, and uh, I really thought, like, man, this could be like, um, this could be like where I could learn a lot that I didn't learn because I didn't go to. And you know, I learned a ton from like Adam Muto and uh, Andy Rustino and Phil Rinda, like the guys who work on the show. I learned a ton of like how to how to really draw, just basic drawing skills. Now, were you on from the beginning, or did you come in no. later? No, I came in much later. I came in season four, okay. and then I was there for season five and six. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what were you doing exactly? I was a lead designer, so it's a really a management position. There's a, bunch, there's a bunch of designers who are like drawing all the props and characters and effects for every episode, and I was corralling all those files. And also drawing, uh, drawing quite a bit, too, but uh, really not as much as I would have wanted to, and um, yeah, so it was like design every day, six days a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But did you have any time to work on your own stuff no. while you were doing that? No. I thought... <laughs> it didn't sound like it. Because there are artists who are like Jesse Moynihan uh, and a couple others, in t you know, who manage to work on their own stuff while they do it, but they're just like superhuman like and I couldn't do it I was Gods. just yeah they're really yeah they're on another level and I just couldn't do it I was just like spiritually exhausted at the end of the week and yeah I was useless so uh, yeah that was a part of the reason I left after two years I was like I gave it I really gave it 110% for two years and then I was like uh, now I gotta get back to my own stuff now it's a, yeah and after in, in any job if you're just you know if you're kind of once you've kind of learn everything you can learn if you're just sitting in that chair you're taking the place of someone who could be a lot more enthusiastic so I wanted to get out of the way and let the next person come in and you know do, do what they had could do for the show okay so what have you been doing since then I'm working on uh, well I mean I kind of took six months off and like was like maybe I'll just become a cook and like quit art but then I like started painting like just doing analog painting and I fell kind of back in love with drawing and um now I just paint with gouache and like crayon and pastel, and uh, it's it's really fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's it's kind of what I always hoped drawing would be, which is like a meditative act where you know uh, you can just kind of relax and sink into yourself. And um, so now I'm making some picture books. I just finished a picture book with Lemony Snicket with Daniel Handler. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's going to be out next fall. And uh, and I finished a picture book with uh, Kirsten Hall uh, with Enchanted Lion, which is going to be out in January. Uh, but I still do designs for animation. I designed, a, I did concept art for a Netflix show coming out next year called True and the Rainbow Kingdom. And it's by the guys Friends With You, which Adventure Time is kind of, I mean, you know, Adventure Time kind of ripped them off a little bit with their happy Candyland themes. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so anyway, still doing one-tone animation, but mostly working on my own stuff. And I'm, 
I just finished this Lemony Snicket book, and now I'm going to work on a, a comic, another comic. Uh, yeah, because okay. I miss making comics. And what I, I bought from you, David, haven't read yet, this uh, comics class? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, I made that a couple of years ago, probably around a little before I went to uh, L.A. That was, I taught, a, I taught a comics class, and I just felt woefully unprepared. So uh, that's just about that. Yeah. I see. Okay. Um, and you're back in Toronto now. You're not no, in I'm LA. in Montreal. I'm in Montreal now. Montreal. Yeah. Well, that's right. You, you were there. You were in Montreal before when I talked to you. I can't remember now. Maybe you were. In yeah, Montreal. I think I was in Montreal. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So most of the most of the TCAP people are from Toronto, but yeah, I was born in Toronto, so I okay. feel like I belong here. But yeah, I live in Montreal. Yeah. Okay. Have you been, have you been exhibiting at TCAF? Oh yeah. yeah, TCAF was the very first show I ever did in 2005. Okay, that's where I started. I first got into comics, and uh, it was a it was an amazing show. And I haven't really like looked back. Really, um, I did every TCAF until except last year's TCAF. I didn't go last year, but I've been involved in some way every year until like yeah last year. I see. Um, because okay. I don't really have any recent comics. My most recent comics is 2012. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I yeah, it's probably you don't have new product. Yeah, you don't want to go. You don't want to go. Again, take just taking up air, oxygen from someone else who's doing something fresh. So, no point. Okay. Any coming attractions for stuff that's going to come out from you eventually? Just those kids' books. And, uh, okay. yeah, I'm yeah, also I'm working on this, like, it. working on, like, a Trans-Siberian memoir. Like, I did, I did the Trans-Siberian 10 years ago. So, like, a comic about that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like I said, that animation. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and where are you on the web? People can find you. Oh, I'm at comingupforair.net. Uh, I'm also at Matt Forsyth on Twitter. And, um, yeah, at Matt, at Matt Forsyth on Instagram, which is probably the most my most mm-hmm. active channel or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the end of a long day, just had the after party, and I'm here with Carl Kershaw. How are you? I'm, I'm great, thanks. I'm, uh, I, I think I'm tired, but I haven't, I haven't quite realized it. <laughs> My body's tired, I'm, but I'm still, I'm still functioning. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, how was the show today? It was amazing. It was, um, th- it's my first show in, in Japan, so it, mm-hmm. I didn't know quite what to expect, and it was, uh, it was extremely busy. I was busy all day, and it's, it's actually, um, this show is really short. Uh, mm-hmm. Compared yeah. to most shows, yeah, I'm five to. Hours. yeah, five hours long. So I was, uh, I had a little bit of time to look around before they opened up officially, and then mm-hmm. after that, it was, yeah, it was a constant stream. Yeah, well, you and Matt both had lines all day. Yeah, plus yeah. you had an hour on the stage. Well, I think, um, yeah, we had the benefit of uh, well, Matt having worked on Adventure Time and people knowing that that mm-hmm. show and uh, the fact that Gotham Academy has been translated into Japanese wow. here. Uh, there was there was at least some existing readership or fan base. So yeah, uh, it was I was fortunate enough to have a lot a lot of people to meet and talk to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, how long have you been doing DC work? Uh, I've been I've been drawing comics for I think 22 years. I think I started my first DC work was in 2001 or 2002. Okay. So quite quite a long time. I, if okay. I, 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 I'm I'm freelance technically, so I'm back and forth all the time. But most of my work has been DC for the last several years. Okay. And now you're still doing your web comic. I was just looking at it a little bit before the party. Yeah, um, uh, I'm still doing it. I um, I'm actually just ready to publish a third print edition, okay. a third volume. Abominable Charles. Abominable Christopher. Charles Christopher. Yeah, it's abominable. Cc. Um, you know, I was just talking to someone about it here. Uh, I, I have a third book ready to go, um, and then I think it will run four volumes, which mm. means there's probably another year and a half or so of... Uh, I, I, I was doing them weekly. You know, I would do one every week. So mm. I would say there's like a good year's worth of strips left at that rate, but I've mm. been because I've been so busy sure. on other stuff, it's been hard to keep up with the weekly mm. schedule. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was... Yeah, looking at, I guess it must be the more recent stuff, just whatever came up on Tumblr, but um, it's having a little... Is, is this supposed to be more of a gag of day? I mean, looking at the art style, I wasn't expecting it to be... Kind of, I was expecting to be kind of a... What do I want to say? A little more kind of serious, continued story, but it seemed to be kind of a lot of one-off sort yeah, of humorous it, things. Well, it, well, initially, it was part of... Uh, when I was in Toronto sharing a studio with, with a bunch of other friends, uh, we, we each started our own webcomic, and it 
each one was supposed to update on a on a specific day, so we each had our own day, and we'd each update mm, once a week. I and I um, I had the idea that. I had the name the abominable Charles Christopher and this vague concept of a, a Sasquatch character mm. kind of dealing with different forest animals but um, it was never ever intended to be a story it was just uh, it was supposed to be slice of life kind of gag a day stuff uh, from the, from the outset yeah. um, and I treat that comic very uh, casually in that I don't I don't plan ahead or think about it until I, I sit down and have mm. to draw the comic once a week. So, um, yeah, it was it was really just moment-to-moment -moment gag stuff, stuff that entertained me until it kind of spun itself into a bit of a narrative, a kind of, kind of a, I guess, I guess my, my instincts kind of kicked in and it became, uh, you know, it started borrowing from mythology mm. <laughs> and it became uh, more of a, yeah, more of a quest story. Um, so I'm, I'm always there's this weird dichotomy um, in that I'm I'm always kind of battling the the uh, the impulse to do narrative work with with the desire to, to not be involved in, in any kind of um, story or arc and just do stuff that entertains me. So mm -hmm. yeah, now I have to wrap up a story, which is uh -huh. which is why it's going to run longer than I think I, it, I think it would. Have. Now, is there a character named Charles Christopher? The main character's name is Charles Christopher. And who is he? He's a uh, he's a kind of a Sasquatch Bigfoot character who doesn't okay. speak. He's sort of a sort of a childlike character who's searching for his place in the world. He kind of it starts with him waking up um, kind of in the middle of the woods and and seeking shelter from the rain and you just get the impression that he he has no real um, motivation or objective other than to eat and, uh, and maybe eventually to start to seek out a bit of information about where like how he fits into this world okay yeah. um, so what DC titles are you doing right now I am doing uh, well I just I just I as a regular artist and co-creator of uh, Gotham Academy for DC Comics, which is a brand new series that, uh, that we started about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago. Okay. Uh, Becky Cloonan and Brendan Fletcher and myself. And uh, I have uh, I did 12 issues. I basically did the first two volumes of it as a regular artist, and now uh, I've, I've, uh, I've pulled back to um, just work on the uh, story arc with, uh, with Brendan and Becky mm. and do covers for it but uh, my full time job now is doing a book called uh, Isola for Image Comics Is Isola Isola yeah for Image, image. Okay. yeah for Image that's, uh, I'm, that's with Brendan also we're writing it together and I'm drawing it and that will come out in May I believe of next okay time. Yeah. and what's that about or what can you tell me about it I can it? tell you yeah it's um, it is about well it's a fantasy story and uh, we focus on this character who's a, the queen um, and the queen's jealous brother turns her into a tiger. Mm. Uh, and the captain of the guard, who's the queen's sort of friend, his name is Rook, sees this happening and kills the brother and then realizes too late that the brother is the only person who can turn her back into a human. So oh. the story is about uh, these two women uh, traveling across the world together looking for this fabled island called Isola, which is supposed to be the entrance to the underworld so they can find the spirit of the dead brother to turn the tiger back into a human. So <laughs> See, that's okay. what it's kind of an Orpheus story. So you get a lot of experience drawing tigers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, um, well, it's, it's, it is uh, sort of, it is a melding of the Charles Christopher work and the superhero work mm -hmm. I do um, as my day job. You know, it's kind of bringing all of these things together finally. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, now... I always want, now you're basically an artist, right? You don't do much writing or do you? I do a lot of, well, all of the Charles Christopher stuff yeah. is me, yeah. so that's that's writing. Um, I, I co-wrote um, a fair amount of uh, Gotham Academy stuff, okay. kind of uncredited, and, uh, mm -hmm. and worked on, um, I co-wrote, uh, I don't know if you remember, DC released a uh, series called Wednesday Comics. Oh yeah, a few yeah, years yeah. ago I co mm -hmm. co-wrote the Flash story with Brendan. Okay. Basically, I grew up with Brendan Fletcher. We're <laughs> we're 
very we're like family. We're like mm. brothers. So um, we we kind of write a lot of things together. Um, some some stuff I do on my own. Some stuff we do together. But yeah. yeah so what's it like dealing with all the reboots? New Fifty Two and then the rebirth and everything changes. And uh, it doesn't affect me much. Okay. I do a lot of covers for DC, and I I guess I I I draw um, stuff. Um, to their specifications, but Gotham Academy was so far outside mm. of what was happening in, in you know, I mean, while in continuity, it wasn't ever really dealing with the superhero stuff. Okay. So um, yeah, we just told the story we wanted to tell. Okay, and, well that's and, cool. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like just worked my way around all of that stuff, and they mostly just left us alone to do what we wanted. Mm, I see. Okay, great. Um, okay, so what's coming up is the Image series. Oh. He's allowed. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, I wanted to say, like, how did this show here compare with shows you've done, like, in the States or Canada? Is there anything you felt that was different about it? Um, well, it's, this show was, it kind of reminded me a little bit of, um, some American shows in the, you know, 80s and 90s, mm. which were far, which were way more comics-based and artist-based, uh, you know, mm. where you could go and, and the whole, this whole show felt like a giant artist alley. <laughs> Yes. Where, and in, in, a, in a, a typical North American show, that element has been marginalized to the mm-hmm. point where, in, in some cases, it almost doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, when like in San Diego, it's kind of point, pointless to go if you're going to be an artist. San Diego is, thing, is, right? is not a comic show anymore. It's a <laughs> giant pop culture uh-huh. extravaganza. Um, there are shows that yeah, like still Mocha like, is still Mocha, a yeah, giant I mean, small artist press alley. shows. Mm-hmm. TCAF in Toronto is yeah. a, a, a great example of mm-hmm. uh, of a show that's focused on art and books. Um, and I think it's my probably my favorite show. Mm. But um, but yeah, for the most for the most part, uh, um, things have gone very pop culture. Yeah. Probably, you know, um, but yeah, the, the manga festa here I, I thought was was really refreshing. It was, it's just really nice to see uh, people sharing their sharing personal work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. This is the fourth year I've covered it out of the five that has been running. I've missed the first year, but but yeah, I enjoy coming. And now it's becoming it's beginning to be more of a community feel because we see a lot of the same artists there every time. Yeah. There are always some new people. Yeah, but. that's really nice. I, yeah, I feel like you, community is the best way to. Put it. It's nice to, that that's being, that's being uh, engendered. I, I heard, I, I guess there's a Tokyo Comic Con coming up too, right? Which yeah, that's sounds this, like it's going to be more like an American Right, show. yeah. It's this new this year in December. Um, and yeah, it sounds like it's going to be more like New York Comic Con or San Diego or something. I'm interested. I'm, I might go. I'm thinking about it. But uh, see how it goes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. Thanks to everyone I talked to at KaiGai. Don't forget, photos of everyone I talked to and links to all their sites can be found in the show notes at deconstructingcomics.com. Write us at mail at deconstructingcomics.com or look us up on Patreon, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and YouTube. All our social media links can be found on the right sidebar at deconstructingcomics.com. Also, please give us a review in iTunes or Stitcher. Our theme is from bensound.com. As you heard Mulele mention, his latest Kickstarter project is running now for MindGator number 2. Get all the details at mulele.com. Last Thursday on To the Bat Poles, we discussed the new animated movie Return of the Cape Crusaders, featuring the voices of Adam West, Burt Ward, and Julie Newmar. And we went through a huge delivery of great Batmail from our listeners, answering some of our burning questions about details of certain Batman episodes. Look up To The Bat Poles wherever you find your podcasts or at tothebatpoles.libsyn.com. This coming Thursday, right here in this podcast feed, it's the 100th episode of Critiquing Comics. Mulele and I dig into a bunch of comics we got at Kai Guy, plus some left over from Mocha last spring. Next week on this show, Kumar and Coom take a look at Frank Miller and Dave Gibbons' 1990 miniseries, Give Me Liberty looking at it through the lens of the 2016 presidential campaign. Till then, this is Tim, and thanks for listening to Deconstructing Comics.